American music executive and multimedia producer Andre O'Neill Harrell was born on September 26, 1960, in the Bronx, New York. He got his start in the music business at the age of 15 as a rapper. He and his high school friend, Alonzo Brown, formed the rap duo Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, representing Andre and Alonzo, respectively. The group experienced success with the tracks Genius Rap and AMPM in the early 80s. In 1985, after releasing several songs and their debut album titled The Champagne of Rap, they also appeared in the cult classic musical comedy drama film Crush Groove. Even at this early stage of the game, Andre had a keen business sense and began honing his management skills. After high school, he attended a couple of different colleges in the city before eventually dropping out and going to work for a local radio station. In 1983, Andre would meet entrepreneur, record executive, writer, and film producer Russell Simmons. He would later also become the co-founder of record label Def Jam Recordings. Andre went to work for him at Rush Management and played a major role in building the careers for the likes of Run DMC, LL Cool J, and Houdini. After gaining several years of experience under his belt, Andre would leave Def Jam and start his own label, Uptown Records, in 1986. The label would become a leader in the music industry as the place to go for young up-and-coming artists in the hip-hop and R&B genres, as well as a new genre dubbed New Jack Swing. The genre consisting of a mixture of hip-hop, funk, dance, and pop rhythms with the urban contemporary sound of R&B was curated by Andre's collaboration with a musical prodigy by the name of Teddy Riley. Heavy D and the Boys, I'll Be Sure, Christopher Williams, Guy, and Jodeci were just a few of the many artists on the label who would go on to become superstars, as well as revolutionize hip hop and R&B. In 1988, after hearing a tape of the golden voice from a female singer from New York, Andre knew he had to meet her. He made his way to her apartment in Yonkers to hear her in person, and she blew him away with her undeniable talent. The following year, that artist by the name of Mary J. Blige became the company's youngest and first female solo artist. Uptown was a brand built on the glamorous life. The mission was to establish a modern day oasis of black excellence. If Def Jam catered to the streets, Andre saw Uptown as a lifestyle brand that promoted the high life of partying, champagne popping, and being ghetto fabulous. In a 1993 interview with pop culture magazine Vanity Fair, Andre explained, I'm an inner city kid who knows the reality of being poor. I'm looking for escapism, fun music, good time music. Andre then signed a $50 million distribution deal with MCA Music Entertainment Group, which involved film and television productions. A couple of his best known projects are the 1991 comedy film Strictly Business, as well as the hit Fox police drama series, New York Undercover. And just like that, Uptown went from being a record label to being on the road to becoming an entertainment giant. Unfortunately, other film and TV projects in development featuring Heavy D, R&B group and Vogue, and hip hop duo Criss Cross never came to fruition. The reasons why were simple and typical. There was a major disconnect between black execs and the top level decision makers who didn't look like them or come from where they came from. The partnership was widely viewed as a bust in the industry, but those in the know said the fault wasn't with Andre, but with MCA, who wouldn't give him real autonomy or put the support he felt was needed behind his projects for them to thrive. Someone else that got his start in the business with Uptown was future rapper, record executive, record producer, and entrepreneur, Sean Puff Daddy Combs. Back in the day, Puff found out what pizza shop Heavy D liked to frequent in the city, and he would go there and hang out. One day, Heavy came in, and Puff pitched the idea of being his manager. Heavy looked at this skinny 18-year-old kid and immediately said no. But he did see something special in Puff and decided to introduce him to Andre. Andre hired him as an intern. As the label grew and Puff honed his skills, there came a point where he wouldn't listen to anyone and started butting heads with everyone. Not surprisingly, Andre ultimately fired Puff. However, little do people know, Puff, as well as his artists and staff from his own label that he had just started, called Bad Boy Records, still remained on Uptown's payroll. 
Andre knew Puff was going to do big things and wanted to support him in any way he could. Another reason behind Puff's firing was because MCA didn't want to release the debut album of a new rapper on the scene called The Notorious B.I.G. that Puff had discovered because of its raw and rough subject matter about street life. In a 2014 interview with daily newspaper The Wall Street Journal, Andre confirmed, I didn't want to sit there and be the one confining Puff because the corporation was telling me to do that. I'm not built that way. I told Puff he needs to go and create his own opportunity. You're red hot right now. I'm really letting you go so you can get rich. Andre experienced a major high in his personal life in 1994 when he welcomed a son with music attorney Wendy Credle. The following year, an opportunity presented itself that Andre felt he just could not pass up. He opted to leave the label he created to take over the CEO position at Motown Records. The stint would turn out to be brief, lasting just two years. Heavy D, who was the vice president at Uptown, took over the president and CEO position after Andre left. These series of changes would prove to be Uptown's downfall. Andre would later chalk it up to Heavy, coming from an artist background, not being comfortable taking on a more managerial point of view when dealing with the other artists on the label. Naturally, that resulted in everyone going in separate directions, and by 1999, Uptown was no more. Upon leaving Motown, Andre went on to make even more magic with other labels. He lent his wisdom and expertise to longtime friend and colleague Puffy by serving as president of Bad Boy Entertainment. He also co-founded label New America with singer, songwriter, producer Kenneth Babyface Edmonds and, proving he still had the instinct for talent, signed a young Robin Thicke. Then, in early 2009, Andre suffered a major health crisis. He had an infection in his blood that traveled to his heart. As a result, he had to undergo emergency quadruple heart bypass surgery. Even though he already had a lot on his plate, Andre decided to dabble in the radio world and began hosting his own radio show called Champagne and Bubbles on 98.7 KISS FM in New York in 2011. He also continued to collect more CEO titles when he ran his own venture, Harrell Records. In 2013, Puff, now going by Diddy, launched Revolt, a primarily urban contemporary music-oriented digital cable television network. He brought Andre on board, serving as vice chairman. The next year, the brand began hosting the annual Revolt Music Conference. It invites artists, executives, and cultural leaders to engage in conversations that explore the impact and influence of hip-hop. On May 7, 2020, Andre Harrell died at his home in West Hollywood, California from heart failure. He was 59 years old. According to his ex-wife Wendy, he'd been suffering from heart problems in the time leading up to his death. The Uptown Records Story, a multi-part miniseries on BET, documenting the story of the label, has been in the works since 2020. As of the making of this video, no official release date has been confirmed. Prior to his death, Andre was previously on board as an executive producer. Andre's legacy is well known and respected among industry insiders and those who were there to bear witness in real time. However, he was never as big a public figure as other label heads like Russell Simmons, Diddy, or Suge Knight. Andre had expressed at various points throughout his career his preference to stay out of the spotlight. He realized he'd leverage some personal brand power by not putting himself in the front, but instead putting his energy towards creating avenues for new talent to shine for both artists and executives. No doubt the miniseries will finally give Andre an appropriate spotlight moment by honoring his legacy and contributions to the world of entertainment. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.